Good afternoon, and welcome to our next session on powering smart buildings with data-driven decisions. We're being joined by Eva Schönleitner. She's the CEO of Crate, a global company, fast-growing, and with a ton of experience in this space. Eva, over to you. Well, thank you so much, Bas, and also thank you so much for uh, hosting the session today. Uh, I really appreciate being able to be here at the conference today. So, yes, uh, you mentioned already um, there is a lot of uh, things happening in the smart building area, and um, the opportunities are huge. Uh, we are seeing that the current smart building market is over $66 billion huge, uh, and smart buildings uh, is as you know, part of the digitalization trend uh, and it's been uh, emerging and emerging over the last few years, but 66 billion is a gargantuan number and it's projected to grow over 10% every year. So it's a, a very large market. There's a lot of trends going on and a lot of innovative new um, um, topics are happening. Some of the topics are just outlining here, uh, but uh, we'll discuss a bit more in detail what this actually means. Uh, the obvious one and first one almost that came around was uh, uh, optimizing and really thinking about uh, uh, facility management and how can facility management be optimized in terms of cost, but also in terms of uh, uh, processes. It went immediately to smart energy management. I'll bring a small example today uh, on that topic. Uh, energy is obviously a, a huge topic to optimize, to preserve. Uh, last topic, sustainability, but also just in terms of cost uh, as well as quality of life um, in the buildings for the occupants. Um, we look at uh, tracking um, and not in a bad sense, but in a good sense to really optimize safety, security, um, well-being of the, of the occupants, whether it's residential or commercial, but also uh, really bringing innovative solutions and we all, I mean, and we're talking smart buildings and I'm talking about large buildings, but uh, we all see this, uh, the technologies are arriving in our homes even of uh, how it optimizes uh, and really improves our you know, ability to manage uh, our homes, ability to manage, uh, you know, give us new notices, uh, totally new services available. Um, we'll pull some of those. Uh, the interior comfort I mentioned a few times but also when we look at commercial residential, but commercial specifically is a topic safety. And when we're talking large scale sustainability is a key theme today um, that we're seeing in the market. So I'm gonna address it more from a technologist perspective. And I'll explain in a second what Great actually is. Uh, but technology wise, some of these trends that we're seeing here is around uh, centralized data storage uh, that uh, suddenly then enables new technologies um, with the availability of cloud technologies, um, wide availability, but also now edge connectivity and edge being the connectivity to the locations or the buildings themselves. Um, it brought upon uh, really enabled uh, new use cases that we have coming. Uh, building automation, I mentioned, but now we're talking about the software off uh, has greatly evolved. Um, the security aspects, uh, we'll discuss a bit more but uh, to ensure that all these connect and, and all this data is highly secure uh, to the topic also of privacy. Intelligent analytics is a huge topic because uh, um, you obviously, I mean, the question is just do you monitor something, but what do you do with this data then? Um, you might want to make sense of the data and actually um, in the one end, figure out what does it mean and on the other end, uh, actually monetize it. And that's why we're seeing a lot of new uh, smart home and smart building solutions that uh, companies are actually providing. Connected sensors and devices is a component of that. Um, the ability to centrally manage and see what is going on, um, because you know, as we know, we don't have experts in all buildings around technology. Uh, this needs to be somehow centrally managed, and this is available now. Uh, very much to the end of uh, intelligent analytics, when we even go further of this, on the topic of machine learning so that uh, the machines, in a sense, the processes that are building buildings, think, uh, let's say, elevators, as an example, or HVAC, actually uh, can improve and can improve over time. And if it's even artificial intelligence very far out there, um, the next level after that, that it's kind of self-learning. One of the key things uh, that I'm also seeing is the, the aspect of real-time insights. We don't want to do, of course, we want historic analysis, all very nice. 
But I want to know whether uh, occupants in the building right now, whether the lights need to be turned on, whether the heating is too hot or too cold uh, to make optimal climate control. Um, and I need to know this now and not an hour later after the person long left. So real-time insights is one of the core ones. And all these new technologies that are, we're seeing now, they are actually out there. They've been emerging. Um, companies have been looking, well, do my traditional technology providers give me these answers? Um, and the short answer is partially. Uh, and then new technologies, as I just mentioned, there have been evolving. And so the combination now really enables this very large growth, growth which we've just seen. So Basa was kind to introduce me and why am I talking about this? Because we are one of these uh, technology providers. Uh, and in fact, uh, we're just one I mean, small big component, but one component of this, what I just, uh, the sensors, the technology, the security layer, the visualization layer, we are the core database uh, for this operational analytics, for this digital analytics uh, and machine learning, the insights that give you the insights. So what our product is and our solution is, is the database that sits in the cloud and also sits on the edge, aka in the building, um, to make sure to run these processes, to store all this data and to provide um, the managers, the occupants, uh, basically the, the owner, uh, real side immediate insights to improve the, the different areas that I mentioned, like uh, energy, like uh, HVAC, uh, like temperature comfort, and so on. So um, we're basically um, a technology company. Uh, we're still in the in the startup phase, uh, scale up phase now. Uh, been around for uh, since 2013, um, and um, uh, emerging and uh, rapidly growing because our database is specifically made for this kind of digitalization uh, use case. So we saw the need. Uh, we realized that existing technologies don't quite have it, uh, and that is how we built this up. So. Uh, uh, highly scalable, both on the cloud on the edge, um, is really the one data hub to help you and uh, and our customers uh, to really bring all this data together to do the immediate insights, analysis, and actions to optimize the smart buildings. Back to just a small use case, and I know Baz, uh, you're working on this like every day, also from your side. Uh, a small one, and it's one of the beginning ones uh, when you look at smart lighting. The classic case of smart lighting, step one is to optimize um, cost, but first to enable it um, and uh, to make sure that it becomes smart. Um, and secondly, then to just say, okay, now it is smart. Uh, smart as in I can adjust as I want, I can optimize, I have lots of flexibility, but um, you know, then realize, oh, um, does this uh, is this the most cost efficient um, way to go? And so in this case, uh, uh, Zoom Global uh, Light actually is using our database as an underlying data layer um, to really enable this use case of optimizing the lightings in, in the buildings. Uh, Zoom Global is actually a manufacturer of the lighting products themselves, and they added a digital solution on top of this uh, for their customers to basically use the lighting uh, even better. So short set. Uh, in this case, um, yeah, it was one of these uh, classic uh, use cases where it's about energy efficiency and actually enabling the the smart, the smart component of the solution to really go in the next step. Uh, what are we learning? I mean, we're seeing, uh, we're working with a lot of customers uh, in the space, and there's a few learnings that uh, from the technology side that uh, I've come across and we're seeing. Um, one is that uh, scalability is key, and to start with something that's not just um, I mean, you know, kind of little small pilot uh, architecture that then doesn't scale is not ideal. Because why is that? Today, we start with one use case. You try it out. Uh, you say, oh, this works. This is great. This doesn't work. Yes, I'm going to implement this. Then you're implementing this over, uh, let's say, one building. Then you implement it over thousands of buildings. Suddenly, you realize, oh, I want to do another use case. Uh, let me try this out. Um, and then suddenly, uh, before we even get to the thousand buildings, you realize, wow, the concept I built doesn't scale. Now I need to start again. Uh, with the base architecture, which then needs to all be retested. Now you are honing in on an architecture and a technology stack and need to change all this. So you lose time, um, the skill sets are different, um, and you're basically starting more or less from scratch. Now getting a taste of what you want, the question is now how to do it. So start smart right away, scale it out, because digitalization of smart buildings is also a huge market already, just in the beginning, there's many more use cases you can't even fathom. 
um, as we move and merge out. So you want to have a platform um, of some sort to stack on the edge, meaning in the building, database layer, application layer, cloud layer that really scales out. Now that most of these services are SaaS anyway, so consumption-based. So if you do a small, a small use case, it doesn't cost you much, but you're already starting with the right stack. Strong recommendation. Define a clear governance model. Data and security is absolutely key in all this because we're talking about um, data running on the edge, meaning in the buildings, but also uh, in the cloud and, and the analytics on top of this. So um, somebody, uh, see in a lot of companies, they have a, a data office uh, or a data officer or a uh, strong analytics teams, um, data governance, where the masters, who provides what, uh, what is just being viewed on and to ensure security is very critical. I mentioned number three already. Uh, pilot hard, try it out, uh, then deploy it in a building or a top of a part of a building. And when this works, then deploy rapidly. And then repeat, repeat, repeat with the next use cases. Um, don't bite off too much, but uh, just go in the step. You become faster and faster and faster. And if you have step one, a scalable infrastructure, you just build it on this basically technology stack, uh, and you then just add services to it and new applications versus having to reinvent everything. Um, the last one is um, clearly when we're talking about buildings, we're talking about remote uh, from a technology perspective, remote locations. So you want to enable solutions that work on the edge and in the cloud, techno speak. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, on the edge means there is some hub of technology um, and there is multiple mostly today, um, in a building, uh, think commercial building, there is a hub around, let's say, HVAC, there's a hub around energy and lighting, there is a hub around maybe uh, elevator providers, have also everybody has their technologies. Um, as you, as managing this building, I'm putting my manager, building manager hat on, um, the simpler it is, and uh, this, you know, if you can just bring it to one hub, if you can, and uh, have one be the master, and then go from there uh, and manage the building aspects on the building in the building. But then you also want to connect. Uh, if you think more than just one building, um, you, well, even with one, but even anything more than one building, you definitely want to have a cloud connectivity to be able to have global visibility, what is going on, uh, data models out there, uh, bringing those down, deploying, deploying, again, um, technical sense, but implementing, uh, yeah, whatever new use cases you have and new advances you have in all buildings very easily, because as I said, uh, you don't have uh, IT people in every one of your buildings being experts on uh, analytics, machine learning, and all kinds of technologies. So um, this is really a kind of a short summary of uh, what we're seeing in the market and where the trends are going. Uh, and uh, I uh, really appreciate uh, you know, the discussion. Um, and uh, I'd like to just uh, maybe turn it to Bas for a few minutes here, uh, so we can maybe discuss from your aspect as well of what is uh, what you are seeing and how this jives from my technology um, side of things. Eva, thank you so very much. I think this has been hugely insightful, but what I find so very encouraging about what you do is that you actually bring these very innovative solutions, this very innovative architecture in terms of smart buildings, but with the DNA of replicability, scalability, and agility already on board. And this is what's been lacking for such a long time. You do a tremendous job, quite obviously. Well done, great. Yes, Eva, we have some time to chat, which is great. Back to you. What are some of the things that you see? What are what's on your mind? What's how do you look at the outside world? Yeah. So when I look at the smart building sign, um, I see that uh, technologies are really here now. Um, it, they're still um, it's still not the easiest. We just need to basically figure out where where is the right stack, uh, which players play together, and who really has this global view of uh, manageability and really being able to. Um, you know, to, to move to the next level, to give us the flexibility to have many options. You don't want to you don't want to stifle the innovators uh, of what they want to do with the buildings and on how to optimize. So that's what I'm seeing. So um, you don't want to be always thinking about IT. Um, you want this to have a check. Yes, I have my, my IT, meaning the, the, the technology stack. I have something good. It works. So what can I innovate now? How can I improve safety? How can I improve sustainability? really the use case is the key. We don't want to be struggling on the technologies. 
uh, and it's not needed now. So Bas, I mean, I know um, from your side, I mentioned a little bit of like, uh, let's say the lighting use case, but what are you seeing uh, some of the key trends um, maybe aligning with what I just said uh, on in their smart buildings? Uh, thank you, Eva. I'd say it's a, it's a uh, super question and, and, and tough to respond to, but there are some clear trends and you don't need a crystal ball exercise to actually do it. This is not about the far out future. This is about now. And some of those trends need a technological response, quite frankly. One of them being that there is an ever larger need for buildings that can provide hybrid usage, uh, hybrid um, very adaptable in terms of, of what people expect from them. And I suppose that the COVID pandemic has expanded and accelerated that trend. So an office building may actually suddenly switch to something completely different in the evening. A residential building, which mixes uh, business and residential uh, and recreational use. And this can just change very quickly. And sometimes it, 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 it can happen and change from one day to a day or a day part to another day part. And that comes with very different requirements. And, and in order to manage all of that, we will need to insert a significant amount of smartness in, in, into the buildings. So uh, we're upping the game and we demand more from the technology industry in order to ensure that we, you know, we get this in good order. Another thing that I see is, uh, well, physical security has always been on our mind, right? You want to be, uh, you want to know who's up at your front door and, and you preferably even want to know who is at your front door before that person is actually showing up. But beyond security, there is something relatively new and it's really, really exploded in our faces because of COVID-19, which is public health, especially in buildings which have that kind of public purpose to them. Um, now, when 9-11 happened, security got on our horizon in, in a very big way, and it's never left us. But with the pandemic, for sure, we're going to talk public health for the next 20 years. So there are plenty of companies that look at people flow. How do you manage people flow? How do you ensure that where people want to go and when people want to go are met with the best type of response uh, for these people and for the building managers? Um, how do you ensure you avoid crowds from emerging where they are not being wanted? So these are some of the trends that I see. They put the emphasis on a hugely dynamic use of buildings. Yeah, it's exactly. I mean, I mentioned it earlier where it said uh, people tracking in the sense um, and it's not negative, but it's real time. And you need to know it, you need to know it immediately as it, as it happens. And you need to also be able to analyze it and somehow um, basically recognize it, you know? especially as we multiply this by, by the thousands. Um, you, you cannot have enough people sitting there watching other people. It just does not work like this. You need the technologies and to be as flexible as possible and then scale and be very dynamic is exactly what you need in these days. Um, so yes, uh, we're taking on your challenge. I'm, I know I'm not just a one component of the whole stack, but I know the technology industry is on it because Otherwise, we wouldn't see this, this large market. Because in the end, we want to enable the use cases and, uh, and what we really, we as a person, um, and we as an uh, as individual, and we as a, as a company, uh, want to achieve here. Thank you, Eva Schönleitner, CEO of Crate. Over to you, uh, Eva, for a final invitation to the crowd. Well, thank you so much. So uh, everyone, you know we have a virtual booth. And please join us. Stay on, stay here. Uh, join us for live questions right now um, and we can discuss uh, the topic a bit more. Appreciate it. See you in a second. <music>